Right up. Happy Bible study. Let's get back into it. We are in Exodus chapter 26. This is the second book of the Bible. We've done a study in Genesis and now we're in Exodus. We're talking about the tabernacle. And God is giving them the instructions in the last chapter of how to build the Ark of the Covenant, exactly, and also how to build the table of showbread. And now we're going into chapter 26, verse 1. Moreover, thou shalt make the tabernacle with ten curtains of fine twined linen and blue and purple and scarlet. With cherubims of cunning work shalt thou make them. The, in, the artwork was very detailed and intricate in these things. In verse 2, the length of one curtain shall be 8 and 20 cubits, and the breadth of one curtain 4 cubits, and every one of the curtains shall have one measure. So all of the panels of cloth that were made on these curtains were the same. They were all of the same measurement. In verse 3, the five curtains shall be coupled together one to another. So they're to be joined. And other five curtains shall be coupled one to another. So that was going, they were making the sides of it and they were to attach these curtains together to make the walls. In verse 4, and thou shalt make, make loops of blue upon the edge of the one curtain from the selvage in the coupling, and likewise shalt thou make in the uttermost edge of another curtain in the coupling of the second. Fifty loops shalt thou make in the one curtain, and fifty loops shalt thou make in the edge of the curtain that is in the coupling of the second, that the loops may take hold of an, one of another. In verse 6, and thou shalt make fifty tashes of gold and couple the curtains together with the tashes and it shall be one tabernacle in verse 7 and thou shalt make curtains of goat's hair to be a covering upon the tabernacle 11 curtains shalt thou make the length of one curtain shall be 30 cubits and the breadth of one curtain four cubits and the eleven curtains shall be all of one measure. In verse 9, And thou shalt couple five curtains by themselves, and six curtains by themselves, and shalt double the sixth curtain in the forefront of the tabernacle. In verse 10, And thou shalt make fifty loops on the edge of the one curtain that is outmost in the coupling and fifty loops in the edge of the curtain, which coupleth the second. And thou shalt make fifty tashes of brass, and put the tashes into the loops, and couple the tent together, that it may be one. One tent, if you will. 
in verse 12, and the remnant that remaineth of the curtains of the tent, the half curtain that remaineth, shall hang over the backside of the tabernacle. And a cubit on the one side and a cubit on the other side of that which remaineth in the length of the curtains of the tent, it shall hang over the sides of the tabernacle on this side and on that side to cover it. In verse 14, And thou shalt make a covering for the tent of ram skins dyed red, and a covering above of badger's skins. In verse 15, And thou shalt make boards for the tabernacle of shittim wood standing up. In verse 16, Ten cubits shall be the length of a board, and a cubit and a half shall be the breadth of one board. In verse 17, Two tenons shall there be in one board, set in order one against another. Thus shalt thou make for all the boards of the tabernacle. In verse 18, And thou shalt make the boards for the tabernacle 20 boards on the south side southward, and thou shalt make 40 sockets of silver under the 20 boards, two sockets under one board for his two tenons, and two sockets under another board for his two tenons. In verse 20, and for the second side of the tabernacle on the north side, there shall be 20 boards. And there are 40 sockets of silver, two sockets under one board, and two sockets under another board. And for the sides of the tabernacle westward, thou shalt make six boards. Verse 23. And two boards shalt thou make for the corners of the tabernacle in the two sides. Verse 24. And they shall be coupled together beneath, and they shall be coupled together above the head of it, unto one ring. Thus shall it be for them both. They shall be for the two corners. Isn't it interesting how intricate and detailed God's instructions are for the tabernacle? He left nothing for them to decide for themselves. He gave them very detailed directions on how to do this. In verse 25, and they shall be eight boards and their sockets of silver, 16 sockets, two sockets under one board and two sockets under another board. In verse 26, and thou shalt make bars of shittim wood, five for the boards of the one side of the tabernacle and five bars for the boards of the other side of the tabernacle and five bars for the boards of the side of the tabernacle for the two sides westward. And the middle bar in the midst of the boards shall reach from end to end. In verse 29, And thou shalt overlay the boards with gold and make their rings of gold for places for the bars. And thou shalt overlay the bars with gold. And thou shalt rear up the tabernacle according to the fashion thereof, which was showed thee in the mount. In verse 31. And thou shalt make a veil of blue and purple and scarlet, and fine twined linen of cunning work. With cherubims shall it be made. In verse 32. And thou shalt hang it upon four pillars of shittim wood, overlaid with gold. Their hooks shall be of gold upon the four sockets of silver. And thou shalt hang up the veil under the tashes that thou mayest bring in thither within the veil the ark of the testimony. And the veil shall divide unto you between the holy place and the most holy. This is the veil um that in the tabernacle, like the one that was in the temple, that was rent in twain when Jesus died. In verse 34, And thou shalt put the mercy seat upon the ark of the testimony 
in the most holy place. So he's saying this veil divides these two rooms and the ark goes in the uh, in the holy in the most holy place. <clears throat> Both were holy, but there was a there was one called the holy place and then one called the most holy place. That was the holy of holies. <clears throat> Excuse me. In verse 35, and thou shalt set the table without the veil. So the table of showbread goes outside the veil and the ark went inside the veil. Okay. And the candles stick over against the table on the side of the tabernacle toward the south. And thou shalt put the table on the north side. In verse 36, and thou shalt make a hanging for the door of the tent of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twined linen wrought with needlework. So this was going to be very uh, detailed artistic work going into these things in verse 37 and thou shalt make for the hanging five pillars of shittim wood and overlay them with gold <clears throat> and their hooks shall be of gold and thou shalt cast five sockets of brass for them let's see how we're doing on our time okay let's go straight into chapter 27 Oh, goodness. Chapter 27 in Exodus, verse 1. And thou shalt make an altar of shittim wood, five cubits long and five cubits broad. The altar shall be four square. And the height thereof shall be three cubits. And thou shalt make the horns of it upon the four corners thereof. So you had these things that, that look like horns coming up on the corners. His horns shall be of the same, and thou shalt overlay it with brass. So they were all to be exactly the same shape and size. And they were to be overlaid with brass. Okay. Um, in verse 3. And thou shalt make his pans to receive his ashes and his shovels and his basins and his flesh hooks and his fire pans. All the vessels thereof thou shalt make of brass. What's going on? Um, oh, we have a we have a uh, a question here. Let's go ahead and lay off right there for just a minute. I have a question here coming in. Hello, Lisa. This is Ruben from Puerto Rico, a follower of yours. I have a nephew who sent me this video and he says he's he has doubt of this. What should I tell him so he will never doubt the word of God? <clears throat> um, the word of God can be traced back to its origins. I did a study on my Bible so I could authenticate it. Um, if he has issues about whether or not to trust the word of God, I recommend that he do his own study and prove it authentic, just like I did. But you can't force someone to do that. God has to lead them in that direction, okay? Uh, pray and ask God to do his thing in the heart of your nephew. Um, now I haven't seen the, I haven't seen the video that you sent obviously because we're live on television here. Um, but 
God has a way of proving himself. Okay. Nothing you can say is going to prove God to someone else. God has to do that himself. You live it, you love it, you learn it and follow it and pray for your nephew. And God can do a work in his life, but there's no way if he's, unless he is interested in seeing the research, you can do the research to authenticate the scriptures, but he's right in some respects because you have corrupted versions of the Bible out there. The most trustworthy one is the KJV from my own personal studies. Now I had an NASB and I had an NIV prior to doing the study and I had to chunk them both in the trash. Okay. The results of my studies uh, prove them um, faulty. Then I learned as I did my studies that all of the versions out there, all of these Bibles that are in English anyway, I did my study for in English Bibles. Um, the KJV traces back to the Textus Receptus and the Hebrew Septuagint, the Greek Textus Receptus, which means received text, and the Hebrew Septuagint. Now, the new versions, they don't trace back to where they should. See, the KJV, you can trace it all the way back to Antioch, the seat of Christianity. But these new versions, they trace back to Rome, the seat of paganism. And all of these new versions out there were translated from two completely different texts than the KJV was translated from. See, the pedigree on the KJV is, is good. You can trace it back uh, and it can be proven as real, true, and accurate, okay? But the new versions like the NAV, NIV, NASB, uh, all of these other new versions, they trace back to two ancient Roman texts called the Vaticanus and the Sinaiticus. And that tells you Vaticanus, Vatican, okay? They're false texts. They were retrieved from a trash can behind a monastery in Rome by two known occultists of their time named Westcott and Hort. These two known occultists took these texts that the monks had considered garbage and thrown away, if that tells you anything, and they pulled them out of the trash can, and that is the origins of all the new versions of the Bibles out there. They These texts were pulled out of trash cans. Uh, do you really want to rely on a Bible with that kind of pedigree? Uh, it's not wise not wise. And then, you know, I had an NASB and discovered that the translator of the NASB, Frank Logston, had renounced his own translation and was scared to death that he was in trouble with God. So I certainly do not want to rely upon a translation that the translator has renounced. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you have to do, you, if you care about having the real thing in your hands, do the study. But I'm telling you, I did the study. And that's why I use the KJV. Not the new KJV, the original KJV. That um, Now, online, I use the 1769 version. Um, this one, let's see, the one I use here, my study Bible, let me see what version this is, what, because they are reprinted, um, at different times. There's a one from the 1800s. I use one from 1769 online. This one, 
Oh, let's see. This is a KJV super giant print because I'm just blind without these glasses. Uh, reference Bible. Copyright 1996. Why is it copyrighted? Seriously? It shouldn't be copy. Bible should not be copyrighted. That's insane. But it should tell us in here somewhere. What is a, why are people copywriting Bibles? It's just crazy. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what year of version this one is. It's more uh, modern. It still has the these and the thous in it, but it's not as the and thou-ish. You know what I mean? With uh, it still has it still uses the the English, some old English, but not as old as some of the other. Uh, KJV translations. So anyway, if that tells you, um, uh, no, you never bother me. I love it when you guys ask questions and I'm happy to answer them. I'll be glad to. We have about, um, but as far as your nephew goes, the Bible can be proven, but if you try to prove those new versions, uh, you're not going to be able to do it. And so, therefore, he would be right, wouldn't he? He would say, well, this is inaccurate. Well, he's right. It's not. So, uh, there, but there is a reliable translation, and that would be the KJV. And, that, and I just, I didn't do foreign language um, Bibles. I just did English for my, is this was for my own study. So, I knew, would know that I can trust my Bible. Uh, I was horrified. When I found out that the Bible I trusted had been renounced by its own translator. Uh, you have to really be careful about what kind of Bible you use. Because when you're, when you're using a Bible that has been transcribed from those faulty texts that were coming out of Rome, the Vaticanus and the Sinaiticus, when you draw your sword, it says little tykes and it's made of plastic. It's not going to hurt anything or anybody. It's not going to hurt any devil. They're just going to laugh at you. But if you draw your sword when you're using the KJV, you've got like titanium. Okay. It really makes a huge difference in your ability to conduct spiritual warfare. You draw your sword with those false versions and devils just laugh. You draw your sword from study of the KJV and they run. Okay, there's a huge difference, and you can tell when you um, when you get into the real thing, you can really tell the difference. So I would encourage you to use the KJV exclusively, not the new KJV, the King James version of the scriptures. That's what I use, KJV. And uh, you can trust that. Wow, we're out of time. I love you guys. God bless you. Thanks for studying with me today. And should the Lord tarry, we will see you again tomorrow night at 6 p.m. on Facebook and YouTube and the CUBN Network. I uh, hear they're in the air. God bless you. Right up.